Hello everyone, welcome to Power Electronics. In this session, we will discuss the need for commutation techniques. We will start with a basic introduction to commutation, then why a tyristor would require commutation and we will at the end of the session look at the different options we have to commutate a thyristor. Let us start with the introduction now. A thyristor is normally switched on by applying a pulse of gate signal. When a thyristor is in a conducting mode, its voltage drop is small, ranging from 0.5 to 2 volts. Once the thyristor is turned on and the output requirements are satisfied, it is usually necessary to turn off the thyristor. The turn off means that the forward conduction of the thyristor has ceased and the reapplication of a positive voltage to the anode will not cause the current flow without applying the gate signal. Commutation is therefore the process of turning off a conducting SCR and it normally causes transfer of current flow to other parts of the circuit. A commutation circuit normally uses additional components to accomplish the turn off. Now with the development of thyristors, many commutation techniques and circuits have been developed and the objective of all of the circuits is to reduce the turn off process of the thyristors. There are many techniques in fact to commutate a conducting thyristor. However, these can be broadly classified into two types, natural commutation and forced commutation. Let us discuss each one of them in detail. I will start with the natural commutation technique. Now the circuit here indicates a natural commutation process. If the source or the input voltage is AC, the thyristor current goes through a natural zero and a reverse voltage appears across the thyristor due to the natural characteristics of the input voltage supply and hence the name natural commutation. The device is then automatically turned off due to the natural behavior of the source voltage. This can be called the natural commutation or also known as line commutation. In practice, the thyristor is triggered synchronously with the zero crossing of the positive input voltage in every cycle in order to provide a continuous control of power. This type of commutation is applied in AC voltage controllers, phase control rectifiers and cycloconverters. So if you look at the waveform here, what we have gotten for the circuit that is at hand, in the beginning of the positive off cycle, VAK becomes positive, but the thyristor would expect a gate pulse to be provided at its gate to cathode terminals to trigger. Now this dashed line is the point at which we are providing a gate pulse. So therefore the thyristor would trigger at exactly this point provided this is where alpha is given. On the other hand, if alpha is provided at omega t is equals to 0 itself, then the output voltage, since the load is only a resistive here, output voltage will follow the input voltage without any phase lag. And this is what is the waveform you would get. And the current waveform is also indicated here, which can be obtained by simply substituting the equation for current as I0 equals to V0 divided by R. This is the introduction to natural commutation. When it comes to forced commutation, in some thyristor circuits, the input voltage is DC and the forward current of the thyristor is forced to zero by an additional circuitry called the commutation circuit to turn off the thyristor. This technique is called forced commutation and normally is applied in DC to DC converters and DC to AC converters. So you should note that in these two converters, the input type of the supply is DC. And since DC does not have a natural crossing zero, this type of commutation is named the forced commutation. The classification of forced commutations 
is based on the arrangement of the commutation circuit components and the manner in which a thyristor is forced to zero. We in fact have two broad categories of forced commutation. First is the current commutation, then we have the voltage commutation. Depending upon whether it is the current that is commutating the thyristor, which usually involves a inductor and a capacitor connected in parallel with a thyristor that is to be commutated, or if it is voltage commutation, it is only the capacitor that is connected in parallel to the uh, thyristor that is to be commutated. So, lastly, what we say is the commutation no circuit normally consists of a capacitor, an inductor, and one or more thyristors or a diode as well. Now, when you have a thyristor involved in commutating a conducting thyristor, such a technique can be called as auxiliary commutation. That is, you are using an auxiliary thyristor to commutate a conducting thyristor and hence the name auxiliary commutation. When auxiliary commutation is involved, once again the categorization of the commutation can be divided into auxiliary voltage commutation and auxiliary current commutation. So, having said that, if we look into the different types of forced commutation techniques, we in fact have these basic seven forced commutation techniques. The first one is the self commutation, which involves a inductor and a capacitor. In fact, many other textbooks will in fact tell you a resistor also connected in series with the conducting thyristor. The thyristor in these particular circuits will turn off due to the resonance current that is created and that is why the self commutation technique is categorized under current commutation technique. The second one is the impulse commutation. Now, the impulse commutation involves a capacitor connected in parallel with the thyristor and depending upon the circuit behavior, the capacitor voltage fall in reverse to the conducting thyristor and therefore turning it off. So, since it is the voltage across the capacitor that is turning off the thyristor, this impulse commutation technique is coming under the voltage commutation technique. The third one is the resonant pulse commutation technique. Now, the resonant pulse commutation technique is once again a current commutation technique and it has a inductor and a capacitor along with a thyristor that is connected in parallel with the conducting thyristor. And this, therefore, this will be a forced current commutation technique. Now, both impulse as well as resonant, resonant pulse commutation techniques use a secondary thyristor or an auxiliary thyristor to turn off the conducting thyristor. Therefore, they both will come under auxiliary commutation techniques. Further, since impulse is voltage and resonant pulse is current commutation techniques, they can also be called as auxiliary voltage and auxiliary current commutation techniques. The fourth one is the complementary commutation technique. The complementary commutation technique is once again an auxiliary commutation technique and it is in fact a voltage commutation technique. Here we will use another thyristor connected in parallel to the main thyristor along with the capacitor will commutate the conducting thyristor. However, in this particular circuit, the auxiliary thyristor can also be commutated by firing the main thyristor and that is why the name complementary. That is, one thyristor will commutate the other conducting thyristor whenever it is triggered. Therefore, one thyristor complements the another thyristor state by sending it from on to off or from off to on. That is why the name complementary. The last three are quite not, uh, naturally less used. We have the external pulse commutation technique, which is by using an external voltage supply to turn off the main th conducting thyristor. Lastly, we have the load side and line side commutation techniques. At the end of the session, I would like to differ, uh, bring out the differences between natural and forced commutation techniques. In the natural commutation, the type of the input AC input voltage source is AC. For forced commutation, the type of the input voltage source is DC. For natural, 
external commutating components are not required whereas for forced commutation external commutating components are required. For natural commutation SCR turns off when its forward current goes below the holding current value of the thyristor whereas in forced commutation SCR is turned off by applying a reverse voltage across it or a reverse current is made to flow across the SCR thereby making the whole uh, thyristor current become less than the holding current of the SCR. Natural commutation again current when the AC input changes will also change whereas in forced commutation a high pulse is forced through the conducting SCR and thereby making the SCR current become lesser than the holding current value. For natural commutation the cost of the commutating circuit is very less because no extra equipment are required whereas for force the cost of the commutating circuit will be high. Again coming to the natural these type of commutation techniques are basically used in converters where the type of the input voltage source is AC such as controlled rectifiers, AC voltage controllers. Whereas for forced commutation, this type of commutation is used in circuits or converters where the type of the input voltage source is DC, such as DC choppers and inverters. Right, that is about the introduction to commutation techniques. In the next session onwards, we will discuss each one of the forced commutation techniques in much detail. Thank you.